In the heart of Chicago, tucked away amidst the hustle and bustle, exists a world where science blurs into magic. Fermilab, America's premier particle accelerator lab, bustles with scientists dedicating their lives to unearthing the secrets of the universe. A seemingly daunting task, yet inspiring in its infinite capacity to question and seek the unfathomable. Pioneering the understanding of the building blocks of matter, this lab has a legacy that thrives on curiosity and discovery. But wait until you hear about the bison herd there. A reminder that science, like a frontier, is always pushing boundaries, always exploring. And then came the lecture, a vortex of minds swarming with questions dedicated to life's biggest mysteries. But what really gets your heart racing is when Bonnie Fleming, Fermilab's deputy director of science and technology, begins to talk about quarks and neutrinos. The very building blocks of the cosmos. And just when you're trying to wrap your head around that, another scientist links particle physics with astronomy, turning the lens to the early universe. But hold on, there's more to this story. And trust me, it's something you don't want to miss. What's up, my amazing and curious folks? Ready to fly into the cosmos of knowledge today? I'm your captain, Caesar, and with me is our navigator, Sonia. Hello, everyone. Excited to be your guide on this mind-bending journey. Together, we're going to dive into the mysteries of the universe. So buckle up, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to tap that bell icon. You don't want to miss this ride on the Curiosity Wonderland. There's a certain magic that exists where science becomes a frontier, and Fermilab, America's legendary particle accelerator lab, is a perfect example. Can you imagine, standing in the heart of particle physics, looking at a herd of bison? Bison? In a lab? You've got to be joking. Not at all. The bison herd has been a fixture at Fermilab since the 1960s. It serves as a reminder that, just like a frontier, science is always being pushed. A frontier of understanding, it constantly evolves and changes. That's poetic. And what's this about a particle accelerator? Ah, the atom smasher. Fermilab's bread and butter. Particle accelerators are used to study the smallest known particles to understand the laws of the universe. It all springs from the idea of Democritus that all is atoms and empty space. And these atom smashers help us understand the universe better? Precisely. By understanding the smallest constituents of matter, we can comprehend the larger structure of the universe. It's an awe-inspiring challenge. I can't wait to hear more. What's next on our journey through Fermilab? Well, we're just getting started. We still have a lecture on particle physics and a few experts to meet. So stay tuned. The curiosity I find most fascinating about Fermilab isn't just limited to the particle physicists. It has a community that's as diverse as the universe we're seeking to understand from retired teachers to artists and local church leaders. It sounds like a universe of its own. But they're all there for the same thing, to understand life's biggest mysteries, right? Absolutely. They come together to listen to lectures on subjects like how we went from a uniform hot dense plasma to the universe as we know today. They debate, ask questions, and seek answers. Can you give me an example of what such a debate looks like? Imagine this, a postdoc fellow ends his hour-long lecture on the expansion of the universe, but the audience isn't ready to leave. They're keen to understand why galaxies far away are moving faster, or how the mass of galaxies affects the expansion of the universe. The room buzzes with intense interest and curiosity. Sounds like a lively place to be. It is. It's a testament to the power of curiosity and the quest for understanding that transcends age, profession, and personal belief. Each person at Fermilab brings a unique perspective. Take for example, a man raised in opposition to science. He didn't fully embrace the scientific method until a personal health crisis forced him to step outside his own beliefs. His transformation into a scientifically-minded person aligns with many stories from history. Like Galileo. He challenged deeply held beliefs when he pointed his telescope to the sky. His scientific discoveries completely redefined our understanding of the universe. Exactly, and that's the beauty of science. It challenges us to question, to learn, to grow. It doesn't diminish the awe and wonder of the world, but rather enhances it as we uncover the true mechanics of how things function. The marvel of Fermilab doesn't stop at the diversity of its community. 
Its mission is just as riveting to unravel the mysteries of matter, energy, space, and time. That sounds like an ambitious goal. It is. They use enormous particle accelerators to send subatomic particles racing into targets at nearly the speed of light. They then capture and study the properties of these particles with gigantic detectors. It's like a high-tech racetrack, but for subatomic particles. I'm guessing they have quite the setup to make this all possible? You're spot on. The infrastructure is as formidable as the science itself. The scientist describes one of the buildings at Fermilab as something out of a sci-fi movie. But at the heart of it all is their intrinsic curiosity, not just about the scientific facts, but also about how their work shapes their sense of meaning and purpose. So, exploring the smallest parts of matter can lead to greater understanding and even a sense of awe? Yes, indeed. It's a fascinating paradox understanding the microscopic to make sense of the macroscopic. It's the beauty of what the folks at Fermilab do. Fermilab's position in the world of particle physics is central. As the National Accelerator Lab, they perform high-energy physics research right on U.S. soil. They aren't just studying protons, but all 12 building blocks of matter including the six quarks that make up a proton and the electron family. Sounds like they've made some significant discoveries. Absolutely. Their contributions include the discovery of the top quark and the tau neutrino, which helped complete our understanding of the fundamental building blocks of matter. These discoveries were all predicted by the Standard Model, our current best theory to explain the universe. So, their work is part of this greater task of verifying the Standard Model and making sure it still holds? Precisely. And sometimes, they find particles that don't follow the rules we expect, which could potentially lead to a change in the model. It's like a giant cosmic puzzle they're perpetually trying to solve. The science at Fermilab runs 24-7. Protons start from zero velocity and are accelerated to near the speed of light. Now, the diversity of research here is impressive. There's particle physics done in a variety of ways at the energy frontier, with the highest energy beams, at the intensity frontier, with intense beams of particles like neutrinos and muons, and also cosmic experiments. Could you give us an example of each type of research? Certainly. Energy frontier research might involve smashing particles together at incredibly high energies to see what they produce. Think of it like smashing a watch to see what's inside. Intensity frontier research, on the other hand, involves creating intense beams of specific particles. It's like, if you wanted to study bees, you wouldn't just catch one bee, you'd want a whole swarm. Lastly, cosmic experiments look at the universe itself for data, like studying patterns of stars to understand cosmic forces. That's fascinating. And I can see how looking both at the smallest and the largest scales can reveal so much about the universe. Exactly. And it's a constant evolution of knowledge. Science isn't just a body of facts, it's a process of discovery. Just like in our everyday lives, there are times when the answer to a question is I don't know, and that's perfectly okay. It's not a sign of dissatisfaction, but rather an opportunity for further exploration and learning. Studying physics is not just about solving old problems. It's about diving into the unknown, asking open-ended questions and finding ways to answer them. It's that unknown, that sense of discovery, which truly ignites the spark of science. So it's like an adventure, almost? Exactly, an adventure with a lot of unanswered questions. And at Fermilab, they're not afraid to tackle the big ones, like why is there something rather than nothing? Quite philosophical, isn't it? Yeah, physics can often intersect with philosophy. A senior scientist at Fermilab, Don Lincoln, is part of the team that discovered the Higgs boson, another crucial piece of the standard model. That's the one they call the God particle, right? That's correct. And Lincoln is also quite involved in public education, hosting hundreds of videos on various topics, from dark matter to quantum foam. It seems they really value educating the public and making science accessible to all. They certainly do. And with Fermilab's vast campus, it's not only a hub for groundbreaking research, but also a great spot for stargazing. One unique feature of Fermilab is its aesthetics. Bob Wilson, the original director, was an artist as well as an incredible scientist. He believed that science doesn't have to be ugly, so many of the facilities at Fermilab have an artistic touch. That sounds so wonderful. A scientific campus that also values beauty. Absolutely. Now, speaking of beauty, there's a profound connection between astronomy and particle physics. 
Here at Fermilab, when they collide beams together, they're able to recreate the conditions of the universe a fraction of a second after the Big Bang. So, they're actually recreating the birth of the universe in their labs? Yes, it's a way of turning back the clock to understand how everything came to be. Quite mind-boggling, isn't it? It definitely is. And isn't this where quantum mechanics comes into play? Spot on. Quantum mechanics is a framework that helps us understand the behavior of particles in the early universe. But this field can be hard to comprehend. Even Richard Feynman, a Nobel laureate and a pioneer in the field, said that nobody really understands quantum mechanics. Well, if even the experts find it challenging, I guess we shouldn't feel bad about being a little lost, right? Absolutely. It's all part of the journey of discovery and understanding. That's the beauty of science. The quantum world is, indeed, tough to understand. But as Doga Kirkwaglu, a theoretical physicist at Fermilab says, you don't understand quantum mechanics, you just get used to it. That's one way of looking at it. Absolutely. Doga also pointed out that mathematics is a language to understand nature. It's the tool they use to build models and test theories. That's quite fascinating. They're using numbers and equations to interpret the universe. Exactly. As for the daily work at Fermilab, it involves a lot of equations and computer models, trying to bring theories and experiments together. Sounds like a lot of brain work. It is, but it's also a quest for answering the big why questions. It's like the persistent curiosity of a child asking, but why? But why? So, it's like they're on a constant journey, trying to understand the deeper mysteries of nature. Yes, it's a never-ending quest. But at the end of the day, it's also their job, their passion, their life's work. It's about unearthing the rules that govern our universe. Why those particular rules? Well, that's another question entirely. It's interesting how science and art can both be ways of making sense of the world. Ricardo Mondragon, the artist in residence at Fermilab, says that art and science are just a matter of perspective. Absolutely. I recently attended an exhibition where the artist used scientific principles in their work. It was fascinating to see how they translated complex concepts into visual forms. That sounds incredible. I had a similar experience at a music concert where the composer used patterns from nature as inspiration. It's like they were telling the story of the universe through sound. See, that's the power of art. It can make us see the ordinary in extraordinary ways. True. And it's not just artists who feel that way. Rachel Pfaff, who began as a snow shoveler at Fermilab and now works in its neutrino division, still finds being part of the science at Fermilab thrilling. It just goes to show, no matter what our role is, we can still find joy and inspiration in the work we do. Rachel's journey from shoveling walks to working in Fermilab's neutrino division is quite the tale. It's a reminder that sometimes the most unexpected paths can lead us to the most exciting places. I remember when I stumbled upon a local storytelling event. I had no plans to participate, but on a whim, I shared a personal anecdote. It felt like being back in school, learning how to engage an audience. How wonderful. I had a similar experience a while back. At a networking event, I ended up stepping in for a speaker who couldn't make it. I had to quickly think on my feet and deliver a talk about the importance of communication in our daily lives. It was nerve-wracking but also exhilarating. Exactly. And as Rachel puts it, the best part is being able to contribute to something bigger. Even though she's not the physicist, she plays a crucial role in this huge experiment involving people from all over the world. That's the beauty of collaboration, isn't it? Whether we're working on a scientific experiment or producing a podcast, we're all contributing our unique skills to create something meaningful. It's humbling, isn't it, to think about the sheer scale of effort needed to understand the smallest parts of our universe. Imagine, Rachel has been part of building the very tools used in these groundbreaking studies, even while pregnant with her kids. It's remarkable indeed. The disparity of sizes, from the gigantic effort to the tiny particles, it's quite poetic. To quote Rachel, you have to do something so big, to understand something so small. And not just small, but unimaginably so. Trillions of nearly massless particles known as neutrinos are passing through our bodies every second, and we're none the wiser. It's mind-boggling, isn't it? But it's this curiosity, this desire, to uncover the mysterious, 
that drives such amazing projects like Dune, the Deep Underground Neutrino Experiment, which will hopefully shed more light on these elusive particles. I can't help but marvel at the world of curiosities that we live in. So many discoveries, so many records, so many incredible facts. Isn't it wild? Are you as fascinated by this as I am, dear listeners? Can you imagine the impact of these studies, maybe 50 years from now? What new understanding might we gain about our world? We'd love to hear your thoughts. And, as always, don't forget to like and share our podcast if you're enjoying the content. Keep being curious, folks. The more we learn, the more humbling it becomes. Isn't it fascinating how the quest for knowledge can both enlighten us and make us feel small and in awe of the universe? Absolutely, it's that paradox, isn't it? The more we understand, the more we realize how much there still is to discover. And sometimes, these discoveries lead us to question not just how things work, but also why they exist in the manner they do. Right. But as the speaker points out, the role of a physicist primarily focuses on the how, and the why often veers into the realm of philosophy. Physics provides us with knowledge and understanding of the workings of the universe, and philosophy questions the purpose and meaning of it all. Yet, despite knowing that every answer might lead to another question, these scientists remain inspired and passionate about their work. It's not viewed as disheartening, but as motivation to keep exploring, to keep probing the depths of the unknown. That's a powerful perspective, isn't it? It's the pursuit of knowledge, understanding that the journey is the destination. Those big questions are not daunting but inspiring, pushing us forward to learn, uncover, and discover. The world of curiosities is indeed an endless one. It's never disheartening, as our speaker puts it, to uncover more questions with each answer. In fact, it's inspiring, like an eternal quest for knowledge. So, the focus is always on asking the right questions that will lead us towards the next discovery? Exactly. And it's not just these multi-billion dollar projects that contribute to our understanding. Simple tools like a telescope and a clear night sky can also provide significant insights. That's true. Sometimes, the simplest tools can reveal extraordinary secrets. And it's not just about the tools or projects. It's also about the passion, like our speaker's fascination with existential questions that hooked him into science. Which brings us back to the interplay of physics and philosophy we discussed earlier. It's the big questions that often propel these scientific investigations. Yes, and it's fascinating that these questions, once solely in the domain of philosophy or theology, are now being addressed through science. But it doesn't make the questions any less daunting or intriguing, does it? Not at all. In fact, the scientific approach adds an additional layer of intrigue as we attempt to unravel the mysteries of our universe. This conversation brings us to the value of skepticism. Being open-minded is crucial, but it's equally important to validate ideas with solid evidence. As scientists, we don't simply believe something because it feels good or intriguing, we need reasons and multiple forms of proof. That reminds me of a widely known quote from Carl Sagan, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Exactly, and this approach of skepticism and confirmation isn't just confined to science, but extends to all aspects of life. We should always question and seek validation before we hold something to be true. True. And yet, despite this rigorous process, there's still room for awe and wonder, like the speaker mentioned, it's truly astounding that everything in our universe works just so perfectly for us to exist. Exactly, everything from the laws of nature to the rate at which stars burn is just right for our existence. It's almost poetic how our lives are intertwined with the universe. Speaking of poetry, did you know that famous poet John Keats once accused science of unweaving the rainbow, of taking the wonder out of life by explaining its intricacies? Ah, I did. But science doesn't really take away the wonder, does it? Instead, it gives us a deeper understanding and appreciation of the phenomena around us. As our speaker put it, we are indeed all star stuff, made from the debris of stars that lived and died billions of years ago. Isn't that marvelous? There's a quote from Stephen Hawking about us being mere chemical scum, which may sound less romantic, but it's an attempt to put things into perspective. It does sound like a stark contrast to the poetic notion of us being star stuff. True, but it's not necessarily a contradiction. While on one hand, we're made of star debris, on the other, our existence is insignificant in the grand scheme of the cosmos. Kind of humbling, isn't it? It is. 
And yet, our speaker believes that life, even intelligent life, exists elsewhere in the universe. Those distant life forms might be gazing at the same stars, pondering the same questions we do. That's an intriguing thought, although, it just deepens the mystery of our existence, doesn't it? Absolutely. And while we continue seeking answers, we should also take time to marvel at the happy coincidence of our existence, as our speaker puts it. You're right. Sometimes, just staring up at a clear night sky can be a profoundly humbling experience. That's the beauty of it. We're part of the universe, learning, wondering, and evolving with it. It might appear like a gargantuan task, but shifting our perspective to understand these cosmic mysteries is indeed a journey worth undertaking. And that brings us to the final thoughts about our journey today. The questions we've tried to answer are universal and timeless, who are we? Where are we going? What are we made of? We may not have all the answers, but it's encouraging to know that we're not alone in our quest. There are countless individuals, just like our speaker, who dare to ask these daunting questions and are determined to search for answers. And it's not just about finding the answers, is it? It's also about changing our perspectives and integrating these profound ideas into our daily lives. That's right. This journey of discovery isn't just about satisfying our curiosity. It's about enhancing our understanding of ourselves and our place in the universe. It can be a transformative experience that shapes our outlook on life and our time on this planet. It's beautiful and humbling, isn't it? Even though we couldn't use the telescope due to the cloud cover, the conversations we've had today have opened up a vast universe of thoughts and ideas. Indeed. It's like carrying a metaphorical telescope within us, always ready to explore the depth and breadth of our existence. Despite odds and obstacles, we continue to search, to learn, and to discover. That, in itself, is a remarkable testament to the human spirit. So, in essence, we've ventured into the infinite, awe-inspiring world of particle physics today. Unveiling the mysteries of the universe, we've met the curious folks at Fermilab, who are studying the building blocks of matter and pushing the boundaries of scientific knowledge. It's been a journey from quarks to neutrinos, from the bison herd to the depths of the dune experiment, all in pursuit of understanding our cosmic existence. The universe may be vast and the answers elusive, but as we've learned today, the pursuit of knowledge is a quest worth undertaking. And that's a wrap for this episode of Curiosity Wonderland, folks. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive into the incredible world of particle physics. We hope it sparked your curiosity and given you a new perspective on the universe. If you loved this episode as much as we enjoyed creating it, don't forget to blast that like button, drop us a comment, and share this with your friends. It's been a pleasure to explore these mysteries with you all. Here's to the relentless human spirit that keeps us seeking, learning, and marveling at the cosmos. And with that, we bid you a warm goodbye. Until next time, keep looking up and keep wondering. Goodbye. Goodbye. The captivating insights we've shared today were drawn from an article titled Finding the Secret of Human Existence in an Atom Smasher by Camille Foster, published on November 6, 2023, on the Big Think site. You'll find the full link in the video description if you're interested in delving deeper into the subject. That's it for today, folks. I'm signing off. <laughs>